welcome to Sigma Tech Learning Hub. I'll be your instructor for home economics. Now for this class, we're going to be taking our exercises from the exam guide app. If you don't have the application already installed on your device, I would want you to download that app in order to follow along in our class. Now, exam guide is a leading educational app that helps students prepare for various exams such as UTME, post-UTME, YEC, GC, KCP, IGMB, JUPEB, Calbepedia, VESE, GSE, NCE, NECO, and a whole lot of other professional exams. Now, you can download the app from www.examguide.com or you can actually go to Google Play Store and download it. Now, don't forget to subscribe to our channel and turn on the notification bell so you can be updated when we send in new videos. And you can also tell your friends about this app so they can also what, benefit from it. Now you ready for today's class? Let's get started. Welcome again to today's class. So we're continuing from where we stopped in our previous class. So today we're looking at care and grooming of different parts of the human body. So remember what I said about grooming. If you've not, just go back to our previous video to see what we discussed on grooming. Now grooming is just that little time to take care of your body, just to look good and to look beautiful. Let's look at the specific objective, what we're looking out for in the course of this class. So by the end of this class, you should be able to care for the hair, choose hair combs and brushes, outline ways to care for the hair, care for the eye, explain common eye defects. Now, let's look at care for the hair. Now, the hair is very, very important. We said the human hair is one of the greatest assets that we all have, so it should actually be, we should actually put a lot of care to see that it is well kept and well groomed. Now, a healthy and well groomed hair helps improve our health and appearance. Yes, we know that if you have beautiful hair and your hair is well kept, you actually look good. Now, the condition of your hair actually depends on hereditary good food. You know, we talked about hereditary. Now, some persons get it from their um, genes, from grandparents, parents, and a whole lot of that. So, it's some of these factors are like your hereditary good food and if you actually take out time to take care of your hair properly your hair will be healthy and well, well groomed now another thing to help you take good care of your hair is if you know your hair type now i'm going to refer you back again to our previous video so because we talked about um the different hair types so you have to go familiarize yourself with that video so you know what type of hair you actually have to now know how to take care of your hair now, we have hair combs and um, brushes, different hair combs and different brushes with different types of hair. And these combs and brushes come in different sizes and in different colors. Now, most of these brushes are often made of nylon. They are bristles from different textures, okay? You find different textures of the bristles. Now, combs can be made from wood, it can be made from metal, plastic, and nylon. So you actually pick the one that is suitable for you. So the combs and brushes actually help you to keep your hair look, um, you make your hair look good by combing and making it look beautiful. Now we're going to look at some points to consider in choosing hair combs and brushes. Now you may be saying, is this a tax key job to do? Yes, it is. You have to put in little effort to see that you pick the combs and brushes that are needed for your hair now the first thing you should consider is the length of your hair okay if you have a short hair you actually go pick combs that are suitable for the short hair you won't use a um, long, um, comb that is suitable for a long hair for a shorter hair so you need to look out for your hair do you have a short hair do you have long hair another thing you should consider is the state of your hair now we have people going natural a lot these days. So if you are keeping your hair natural, you need to get combs that can help you comb easily so you won't have to feel any form of pain while you're combing your hair. So if your hair is permed as well, you know, maybe you've added a little bit of relaxer on it. So the type of comb you need to use too goes a long way. Now your 
the state of your hair is one other factor you should consider when choosing a hair. And another factor is the brush and comb. You know, it should have good finishing. Now, a lot of these combs we find, you know, they are not well finished properly. Maybe in the course of production, there's this dangling part out of it. And by the time you use it to comb your hair, you know, it picks your, your hair and it's so painful. So you need to look out for the finishing part of the combs when you want to buy them. So when you're combing your hair, you don't scratch your, um, your scalp to hurt yourself. Now, another factor you should consider is that is a comb durable? Is a comb durable? You know, I've seen most comb, I've used some combs. I immediately use it to comb your hair. As you're using it, it just breaks in your hands. So the comb must be what durable for use. Now, another factor is that you need to consider the amount of money you have, uh, how money available to get some of these combs that you need for your hair. So money at hand is another factor that is necessary when choosing combs and brushes. Now, how do we care for our combs and brushes? I see a whole lot of some person's comb looking dirty and very unkept. Now, you need to take care of your hair because if you don't, you're going to get infected with germs from these combs. Now, you need to learn to take care of your combs. You do this by removing the dirt at the base of the comb, either using a small brush or a broom, you know, you just pick the comb and then you're taking out time to remove it and you see the dirt coming out from those um, parts of the comb. And also you need to form a habit of washing your combs before you wash, as you're washing your hair most times, you can actually wash your combs as well, wash them. And also you need to wash them by soaking them in warm water, warm soapy water, then also wash the teeth of the comb using a soft brush, just as you see in the picture, okay, you get a smaller, um, a smaller toothbrush to wash those combs and the brushes so they can be um, healthy for you to use. Now also, after each use, you must remove the fluff of the hair. And after you comb, you leave some of the fluff of your hair in between those bristles. So you need to take them out and you need to discard them. Don't just leave them in the comb, just in case you're sharing or if you're not sharing for your next use. So you need to make them look good so make sure you take the fluff off the hair from the, um, the comb. Now another thing you should consider is to wash, brush, soak in warm soapy water. Wash bristles gently with, just like we said, you know, you wash until the dirt is removed. Absolutely. Now for your brush, you need to soak with water and then you do what? You have to shake it properly for your brush. After wash, you need to shake it properly so you get a whole lot of water out of it before it gets dried and you can now sun dry it so you can use it the next time you want to use your tooth, your brush, sorry. Now ways of caring for the hair. The first one here is by washing and shampooing. Now you have to choose a suitable shampoo. The one that suits your hair type and then also, now if you have short hair, you might likely have to wash your hair every day. Maybe you're on low cut for the boys, you have to as you bathe, you have to wash your hair. Then for the girls, if your hair is short as well, you can still wash every day. Now, if you have a long hair, maybe you're making your hair, you won't have to do the washing every day, maybe weekly or let's say two weeks time and as much as you can wash your hair so you keep your hair healthy. Another thing you should do is to comb and brush your hair. You need to comb your hair to untangle hair and also keep that and um, dandruff away from your hair. You notice most times when you comb your hair, you see some dan um, scaly like thing fall off your hair. That's dandruff. So you, as you keep combing, you get those things off to help, you know, the proper circulation of blood on your head. So by, you do, by doing that, you help the free flow of blood and it helps you to stay healthy as well. Now you need to apply oil to your hair regularly. Why do you have to do this? Because it helps you to prevent dryness of the hair and the scalp. Now when you apply this, it keeps the hair moist so it won't be dry and looking very, very unkept. Now excessive dryness of the hair could actually lead to hair damage. Yes, your hair will begin to break because it doesn't have a lot of this moisture to help it hold together so it start breaking off so you need to apply hair and um, oil to your hair 
Now, let's look at some common hair infections. Now, do hair have infections? Yes, they do. So we are going to look at some of those hair infections. Now, dandruff. This is mostly common, okay? This appears as scales on the scalp. As we can see, most of us have it, but some persons have a stream of this dandruff. It is so much that they need to see um, a doctor or they need someone that's a specialist to actually take off those dandruff. It can be very, very inconveniencing when you have dandruff on your hair. So that's what dandruff looks like. Now, what are the causes of dandruff? Simple dandruff is caused by natural shedding of the dead cells on the surface of the scalp. Now, that can be likened to be normal, okay? Now, when you're shedding of new, um, um, you, when, when you're shedding of dead cells from the hair, so it happens to take the form of dandruff, and it's okay, simple. So a little bit of washing and shampooing can actually take that away. Now, for neglected um dandruff this is when you know the dandruff has been infected you know bacteria by bacteria and fungi most of the time so it actually brings this thick scale if you see some person's dandruff you know it's so scaly and then it can be very itchy too so at this point you would have to consult a doctor and to replace some proper um anti-dandruff um treatments so you can actually get that off. Now, how do you treat dandruff, treatment for dandruff? Now, you can actually do this by removing as much scales by brushing and combing vigorously, okay? I do this most times, you know, I just, and I, you know what I like doing? I, I'll just keep something white or a paper or something, so as I'm doing it, I want to see as much as um, the dandruff that come up when I'm doing that. So you can actually do that using a small comb to actually shed those dead cells away. Another thing is that you need to wash your hair at least three, um, two or three times a week if that's your the dandruff is that much with anti-dandruff or antiseptic shampoo or soap. So another thing is that when the hair is completely dry, then you need to apply oil. You need to apply oil to the hair. So that's another way to treat dandruff because sometimes it is as a result of when the hair is too dry. That's when you have those um, dandruff, those dead cells appearing on the hair. Now there are some home remedies, natural home remedies that you can actually um, practice to actually keep dandruff away from your hair. Now, if you know the neem leaves, okay, I think we call them dogora, uh, dogor yaro, something like that. So those are neem leaves. You can use them to actually cut the growth of um, dandruff. Also, apple cider vinegar, baking soda, salt, cord, lemon juice, coconut oil, and then green tea. All these are natural home remedies to help, you know, your keep your hair free from than drop. Now another hair infection we have here is hair lice. Lice. Now you need to take note that in this period of natural hair, a lot of persons are going natural, a lot of persons are keeping natural hair. Now the the, um, the surface of hair lice is now much than it was before. You know when you have um, permed hair you tend not to find lies in it, but now it's so common. Now my daughter came up with lies and then she actually gave it to me. So what did we do? I actually cut her hair and then, you know, burnt the hair. We're going to see how to take care of all of that in the course of the lesson anyway. But now for the fact that this period is this much, you have to be very, very meticulous to see that you don't get in your hair infested with what lies. Now what are hair lies? These are small insects which infest the hair. They are parasites, yes they are, because they actually feed on your blood. So, and they can be very, very itchy. They can be very, very itchy. Now most persons mis, um, sometimes mistake the, the presence of lice for dandruff. No, yes, because they both itch. Now, lice can be very, very discomforting. So you need to look out for, for it and see that you're not, um, actually your hair is not infested with what? Lice. Now, what are the causes of lice? 
Now, lies tend to thrive in what? Dirty hair. They tend to thrive in dirty hair. Now, they spread from one person to another. Yes, they spread from one person to another. When you share comb, you can actually get it if the person what has lies on his or her hair. And also, if you put your hair where someone that had gotten lies had put their hair, you would actually get infected. So it can be passed from one person to another. Same, yeah, using same combs from infected hair. Yes, of course, it will pass to you. So these are the causes of lies on the hair. Now, how do you treat lies? Now, the first thing you can do is to shave all of the hair completely. And um, after... Um, cutting the hair, make sure you burn the hair. Now remember one very awkward way they usually uh, pick off or uh, sweet lies when we were younger. You know, when we go see my grandma, when we were infected with lies, they had to shave our hair and they used shed toes. That's so dangerous. They never, that was the height of ignorance and they sprayed our hair. Told us to close our eyes and our nose. They had to spray our hair. So don't do that. It's not healthy. But after cutting your hair, it's necessary to shave the whole hair. Maybe the lice is so much, you need to shave all of them and make sure you burn it so it doesn't actually find a hiding place to so now come back to, to you. So another thing is that where you cannot completely shave, you can actually cut it very low and then use a small comb to actually comb and comb. I tell you, as you're combing, you see the lice on just use a white surface, you see the lights falling off. And as much as you do that, you can actually get a whole lot of them out of the hair. And also, you can also use the comb. You can dip the comb in vinegar to help losing the eggs. Yes, they lay eggs So because they have to keep reproducing. So that way, you are actually losing their effect on your hair. And also, maybe if you've tried all of this and then it isn't working for you, you can actually go to a pharmacy to get the anti-lose ointment. Now, let's look at some ways to actually take off um, lice from the hair on the eggs. So you can actually use neem leaves, you can use um, tea tree oil, you can use vinegar, you can use oil, um, onion juice, you can use garlic, and then also wet combing dipped with um, vinegar as well. It will help um, stop or actually stop the growth of the, the eggs on your hair. Now, how do we prevent lies on our hair? Keep the hair clean. Like we said, they thrive what? In dirty environments. Avoid sharing items such as comb, brushes, scarf, beret, hats, a whole lot of these things with other people. Do not share them. If you do with someone that has lies, automatically you have what? Lies. Now, keep your combs and brushes clean. Wash them, just like we've learned. Wash your brushes and your combs. Now avoid leaning on what public centers. Maybe you go to the park and then you're leaning. Someone that would have had lies that are lean on that um, chair or a table, whatever. So you would just get a one-way ticket and just carry up those lies. Now because they're parasites, they can actually stay anywhere. So you don't just have to go start leaning everywhere you go, your hair and all of that. You have to be very, very careful so you don't actually um, get your hair or your, your hair infested with lice. Now, another skin infection that we're looking at now is ringworm. Yes, we find this a lot. And then this is also sometimes associated with the body or the skin not were kept clean. Now, this is caused by a greater fungi between the inner and outer layers of the skin. It shows a central part, you know, surrounded by a ring of small round spots. Now, if it's on the hair, that place is always bowed, you know, without hair. Now, if it's on the skin, you just see that spot on the skin. So that's one skin um, infection. And also for the hair, you find it on the hair. You see people with um, dandruff, I'm sorry, ringworm. You see, just see it on their hair as we're going to see in the course of this class. Now, treatment of ringworm. Yes, as you can see on, the, um, on your screen, you can see this is how um, ringworm looks like. And then I've actually noticed that um, ringworm 
is mostly associated when people play with a whole lot of sand. You know, you're too, um, you play with a lot of dirt, so you can actually get infected with this. You need to shave the whole of the hair completely and take proper care of it so it doesn't um, actually spread in the, in the whole hair. And also you need to see a doctor concerning that so you can be actually placed on proper antibiotics and some treatments to actually see that it doesn't show up again. Now how do you prevent the occurrence of ringworm? Always keep the hair clean. Do not use other people's comb. We have emphasized this over and over again. So do not share any of these things, these articles, your hair, comb, whatever, with people. Do not share them. Yes, I said hair because a lot of people share weave-ons and all of that. Do not share these things with people. Now keep all tools used for the hair very, very clean. Keep them clean. Now, another home remedy is for, um, to treat ringworm. Coconut oil can actually pacify. It can help. Apple cider vinegar also can help. Turmeric can help. Um, aloe vera, tea tree, lemongrass, and the muleti can help curb and to treat what? Ringworm on your hair. So let's look at the care for the eyes. Now we're looking at the care for the eyes. The eye is one of the sense organs, so it needs to be taken care of properly because it is very, very delicate. And then if you do not take proper care of it, it can result in a whole lot of things. Now let's look at how we should take care of our eyes. Now use good light when you are reading and um, sewing, you know. You need to good very use very good light when you're reading and maybe you're sewing you know you need to actually get poor light can actually strain the eyes and damage the eye so do not rub your eyes if there's anything in it now that feeling can be very very tempting you know to always eat the eye it can be very soothing you know it's very sometimes it's very soothing to eat the eyes yes we're all guilty of it sometimes but it's not advisable to always do it do not eat the eyes often okay don't even eat Itch it if you if there's a way you can avoid it don't itch the eyes and also do not ro um, wash the eye with disinfectants you know um, except otherwise if the doctor says do that but for you don't just pick up any disinfectant and start washing your eyes you know it's not advisable don't do that except it's doctor's prescription now another thing is that do not look directly to the sun sun ray, the lights, and any maybe an electric light. Do not look directly to the light. And even those lights that they're using, welding. You know, I was told even from when I was very young. So whenever I'm around that area, I'll just take my eyes off that um, welding light. So you don't look at it because it's all of these rays can actually um, distort the uh, eyes as well and cause some ill feelings now another thing is that do not bury another person's face too well for wiping your eyes don't don't do that it's not healthy and it's not even advisable do not do that now what are the effects of lack of proper care of the eye when you don't take proper care of your eyes what happens you're going to have your eyes strained you're going to have your eyes strained and then it looks reddish and worn out most times so that's one of the effects when you don't take proper care of your eyes. Another thing is that you're going to get your eyes infected. You see a lot of mucor coming out from your eyes, and most times you can actually just stay and them tears are dropping down from your eyes. This is an eye infection. So another thing is that poor sight. You, you're going to have poor sight, and this will actually make you to actually go for using glasses. And also, when these um, cases are actually severe, now, when they are not actually take, properly taken care of, it can actually lead to blindness. So you don't want to go through that process. So why not? Because prevention is what, like they say, is better than what? Kill. Yes. So actually put in this effort to actually take care of your eyes so it doesn't result to that. God forbid. Now, common eye defects. Common eye defects. Now, long-sightedness. This 
set of people can actually not see you close, but they can see something from a very far distance. They can actually see something far, but they can't see something so close to them. So don't be so angry sometimes when most people don't see you at a close range. They may actually be what long sighted. They, they can actually be what long sighted. So it's it's possible. So another um, eye effect is that you can be what short sighted. Short sightedness. Now these people can see far, but they can also they, they see objects that are what close. They can't see far, but they can see objects that are close. So another one is night blindness. Now this set of people, when it's dark, when it's in the night, they can't see things. So at this point, you need to visit an optician, you know. So some persons, there are a lot of causes or if, um, effects to this, but they, this is an eye defect that is common as well. Most persons in the night, they can see and it's referred to as night blindness. Now, when you need to remove foreign objects in your eyes, what should you do? Do not rub the eyes. Now, something mistakenly goes into your eyes and then you want to take it off. And what you're doing is just to, you just start rubbing the eyes. No, don't do that. Don't do that. Another thing you can do is to pull up the lower eyelid down and examine it carefully. Maybe there's something in there. And you can actually do this by actually using a clean, damp cloth. You just put your hands down and see how you can clean it without, you know, hurting yourself and to see that it is what removed now um, another way you can actually get um, foreign objects or things out of your eyes is to uh, actually get a bowl of buckets uh, or a bowl and dip your eyes in it and it will get i don't know i usually do this and from when i was younger and no one taught me that but i just did I just do that and it helps me a lot. So you can actually do that. Just put, if you notice there's something in your eyes and you don't want to itch it, just get a bowl of water, put your eyes inside and just shine it off there and it will go off if there were something in the eyes. So now if all of these methods that we've talked about doesn't work, then you need to see a doctor to now see what is really in the eyes. Don't do anything else. So visit a doctor. Okay, now let's use the exam guide app to practice some questions based on what we've learned today. Now let's get started. Okay, let's take this question. Which of the following ways cannot be used to prevent tooth decay? Avoid sharing toothbrush with others. Clean the teeth after baiting. Keep your teeth cleaning materials properly. Use other people's chewing sticks. Visit dentists occasionally. So the answer here is um, use other people's chewing stick. Now, if you do this, you cannot prevent what? To decay. If you do this by sharing items with other people, um, brushing materials and all of that, you're actually going to get your teeth infected. So you should... Avoid using people's chewing stick. Okay, let's look at this question. Cornean is for eye, as septum is for, is it the ear, nose, skin, teeth, thong? Septum is for what? Yes, for the ear. It's associated with the ear. Let's look at the next question. Okay, now feeble steps are associated with is there an adolescent, an infant, pregnant woman, toddler, vegetarian? Feeble steps, you know, when you can actually walk properly. Which of these persons is he associated with? Okay, the answer is toddlers. Toddlers. You know, they are learning to walk properly, so they tend to have feeble steps now what is the complete set of an adult teeth we should know this 32 yes
how many now this let's look at this next question the year is divided into dash parts we have two three four five six now the year is divided into three parts we have the inner ear, the outer ear, and the, um, you know, the one we can see out of the ear. So it's divided into three parts. Now, let's look at this question. We're still going to look at it. A skin injury caused by a heavy blow on the skin is bruise, born, cut, scar, sting. So what do you think the answer should be? Yes, bruise. That is the correct answer. So that's um, an injury caused by a heavy blow, you know, that keeps this dark or bluish color on the skin. It's referred to as what? Bruise. Thank you for participating in today's class. You can practice more questions using the exam guide app. Now the app scores and gives a detailed explanation of all the questions at the end of your practice test. You can learn a particular topic of interest with different modes like the study mode, mock mode, and practice mode. It also has all the features that make learning fun. It is a must have for every serious student. I know you are that serious student. Now you can download the app from www.examguide.com if you don't have it yet. Please do. Now, see you in our next class. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, hit the notification bell, and share the videos to your friends, your family. I'm sure they'll benefit from it as well. Bye for now.